Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in adjournment proceedings to pursue a question I asked on February 18th of the Prime Minister. The response came from the Minister of Public Safety. Uh, the response was not responsive. Uh, what, I am, what I was attempting to ask on February 18th was to point out that on that day, and having been opposing Bill C-51 in this place since February 2nd, I welcomed with open arms the decision of the official opposition to join me in opposing this quite terrible piece of legislation. But I also rose to defend the official opposition as I discovered that through question period, every question was premised on the notion that if you opposed Bill C-51, you were one of two things, either someone who hadn't read the bill, or two, somebody who was ideologically opposed to everything the Conservative Party stood for. My point on that day, February 18th, was how would the Conservative Party talking points reconcile the notion that people who opposed C-51 hadn't read it or were ideologically opposed to the Conservative Party, when at that point, on February 18th, the editorial position of the Globe and Mail was uh, based on having read the bill, based on the detail that was found in their editorials, and also a newspaper that generally has endorsed the current leader of the Conservative Party, the Prime Minister, time and time again. It didn't seem to fit the talking points. Now, since that time, the National Post editorial board has also come out against Bill C-51 as rushed and dangerous. Uh, voices hardly of the left, such as Conrad Black, on the pages of the National Post said that if C-51 was passed, this country would become, in his words, quote, an unrecognizable despotism, unquote. There have also been voices of caution from people such as Rex Murphy. And then in a more nonpartisan sense, we have the warnings of four former prime ministers five former Supreme Court justices, and over 100 legal scholars. Now, in the face of all that opposition, and more, such as the Canadian Bar Association and others, we had the travesty of what was considered a hearings process of Bill C-51, witness after witness pushed through quickly. I remind this House that back in 2001, when the first anti-terrorism legislation was passed, it certainly didn't take a long time to do it after 9-11, but there were witnesses, and they were not insulted. They were witnesses and they were heard. There were questions for parliamentarians who actually were interested in information, not just shutting down debate, as the parliamentary secretary did over and over again, talking through the time when she might have asked a question to instead attack the people in the room or to presume that she could explain the bill away, explain the problems away. Having been through this process, Mr. Speaker, I have to say it is the least respectful, most appalling anti-democratic treatment of any bill in the history of this country. I have never seen such a travesty of a fake review of legislation, such a bulldozer to push something atrocious through this House. And as a member of Parliament, I'm entitled to sit in committees. And then I had to sit through clause by clause where I am in, in, coerced into appearing because of a motion passed by that committee that insists that members such as myself show up in committee to speak to, the, to each motion that we make, each amendment, for 60 seconds but then attacked and insulted, and treated as though anyone who sees the flaws in this legislation must favor terrorists over Canadians. This kind of insulting, offensive rhetoric in a parliamentary committee reviewing legislation that offends our Charter of Rights and Freedoms is completely unacceptable. When will the Conservatives learn that it's not just voices of opposition parties, but a wide consensus of Canadians from left, from right, from legal professionals and from former Prime Ministers who say, do not pass this bill. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Public Safety. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's certainly a pleasure to rise in the House this evening to discuss Bill C-51, the Anti-Terrorism Act 2015. As we heard from credible witnesses, and I state credible witnesses at committee, this is an important bill to ensure the safety and security of Canadians, which remains this government's top priority. The threat of terrorism is all too apparent in the wake of events here in Canada and around the world. The committee that studied this bill repeatedly heard that the threat is real, it has grown, and it's evolving. Mr. Speaker, our government needs to evolve with that threat, which is exactly what Bill C-51 proposes to do. The measures in C-51 will ensure the government is better able to protect Canadians and the Canadian values such as freedom, democracy, and tolerance. 
This is a comprehensive package of measures that will provide our security and law enforcement agencies with the tools and flexibility they need to more effectively detect and disrupt national security threats before they can harm Canadians. First, Mr. Speaker, would ensure that information relevant to national security is shared and actioned in an effective and responsible manner. Second, the bill would enhance the powers of the Canadian Security Intelligence Service in order to better address the threats to the security of this country. This bill will also bo bolster the protection of information to immigrate in immigration proceedings when disclosing the information would be injurious to national security or endanger the safety of any person. Fourth, Bill C-51 will further mitigate threats to transportation security and prevent air travel for the purpose of engaging in terrorism. Additionally, this legislation will also better enable police to detain suspected terrorists and to prevent threats. This is a measure that every police, every, every single police representative, national security intelligence uh, people who, who appeared at committee, every single one of them that appeared before the committee stressed it was an important tool to all of them. Although the opposition and the member from Saanich Gulf Islands refused to listen to the police testimony regarding the importance of these tools, our government has. And we will provide it to our law enforcement and national security agencies to ensure that they can prevent terrorist attacks from taking place in this country. And finally, Mr. Speaker, the bill will provide witnesses in national security proceedings with additional protection. These legislative enhancements mirror many of the same authorities already available, already available to our closest allies, including the United Kingdom and Australia. Bill C-51 will serve as an important step forward in our country's counterterrorism capabilities and reinforce our commitment to protecting Canadians at home and abroad. In doing so, it also ensures that adequate, adequate safeguards are in place to protect Canadians' rights. Most importantly, the measures would be implemented under Canada's already existing robust security review mechanisms and institutions. Mr. Speaker, freedom and security go hand in hand. The provisions within Bill C-51 are designed to protect both. The highest responsible of our government is to keep Canadians safe and keep our country secure. Although the opposition is unable to come to grips with the need to stop the terrorist plague known as the Islamic State, we will not stand on the sideline as Canadians are threatened either at home or from abroad. Mr. Speaker, Canada's national security institutions require modern tools to, tools to counter modern threats, and I urge all members to support Bill C-51 and stand behind the work of our law enforcement and national security agencies. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Sandy Gulf Islands. I assure the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary that I listened to the witnesses, although I was not allowed to ask them a single question, even when the Honourable Member from Esquimalt, Juan de Fuca, gave up a point so that, uh, his, of his minutes or so to allow me to ask a question. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary denied me the opportunity. I don't know why they were so afraid of my questions. I've read the bill, I've studied the bill, and I agree with the Canadian Bar Association and with security experts. Let me stress this one point in the seconds I have left, Mr. Speaker. This bill will not make Canadians safer. This bill will make us less safe. It will unleash CSIS as a secret agency to disrupt affairs without any obligation to report their activities to the RCMP, with no pinnacle of security operations to ensure that Canadian border security, the RCMP, CSEC and CSIS know what each other are doing. And as the Honourable Justice John Major, former Justice Supreme Court said, when you have agencies such as this operating in isolation and in silos, mistakes will happen. That's how Air India happened. This bill will make us less safe. Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. All members of this House believe strongly in Canadian values. Freedom, democracy, and the rule of law are bedrocks of Canadian society, and so too is security. The important functions of the Privacy Commissioner and Auditor General continue to be respected in ensuring accountability for government activities related to this bill. These are effective institutions which have served Canadians well. Although yesterday that member dismissed departmental officials' clarifications regarding the misinformation being spread as nonsense, we respect our hardworking officials and their expertise. 
along with the dozens of witnesses who appeared before the committee to explain why the legislation is absolutely critical. While the opposition continues to work to handcuff our police, blindfold our national security agencies, and fail to support measures to protect Canadians, our government will continue to do the complete opposite to ensure that the law enforcement and national security agencies have the tools necessary to protect national security and every single Canadian in this country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.